All right, welcome everyone. Today we are going to talk to Dr. Jameson Spencer about his experience and advice with dental sleep medicine, some tips and tricks and how you can learn more and make sure you stick around to the end because we have a free webinar opportunity for you. So first off, let me introduce myself. My name is Samantha Driscoll and I am the marketing manager at Airway Management. And I have been in dental sleep medicine for about seven years. I am really excited to have our first live broadcast interview with Dr. Jameson Spencer. I've had the privilege of working with Dr. Spencer over the years and have heard him lecture at many different dental meetings. And he has an entertaining style and really has a gift for making some of the more complicated areas of dental medicine seem a little bit easier to understand the American Dental Association meeting the Greater New York, California, and Texas Dental Association, Hinman, and around the world. And I could go on, but I will let Dr. Spencer speak. So Dr. Spencer, thank you so much for being on the broadcast today. Well, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm glad to be here, and uh, hopefully we, we get our message out to a whole bunch of dentists. Uh, this is a super important field that we're involved in here and, and helping people and literally saving lives. And I'm excited to be with you today, Samantha. So thanks for, thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. So I would love to dive into the first question of how did you get into dental sleep medicine? Yeah. So uh, a little bit of a, a bizarre uh, a chain of events, but I'm from Boise, Idaho and went to school in Illinois and actually went directly from dental school into a TMD only practice. And there is a gentleman there named Ed Mathis. He had limited his practice to just treating TMJ problems for uh, almost a decade and I was blessed to kind of come in and take over his practice. Just uh, again, a crazy thing. There's very few people. I was probably one of the only people in the world at that point who had gone right out of school into a limited practice. And so I've technically never done general dentistry a day of my life. Uh, you know, as you know, there's no such thing as a specialty in, in TMJ problems or craniofacial pain or facial pain, but that's all I've done. Now, because of that, treating spl with splints and things like that, after a couple years of being focused on TMJ problems, we started learning more about sleep apnea. And of course, with the oral appliances, it was very uh, just an easy move from doing splint therapy to doing oral appliance therapy. And a lot of the kind of pioneers in dental sleep medicine did come from this parallel road of, of TMJ problems. You know, Keith Thornton himself being a prosthodontist, uh, and he had this understanding of prosthodontics and oral appliances and things. And I, I think that's one of the reasons he got involved too. So now I've been in practice 19 years and about the last 17 of that, we've done TMD and sleep. And I'm really a, a huge believer in those two things go together. You really can't separate them. Absolutely. I, that's thing that you went right into kind of a specialty, so to speak. Um, I don't think I've heard that often. So you sound like you have a lot of experience. So from your experience, what is your top, tip or recommendation you have for somebody considering getting into dental and kind of getting into that world? Yeah. So I think number one is perseverance. So I've, as you, as you mentioned, I speak around the world, uh, uh, this time of year, you know, fall, winter and spring, I'm three weekends a, a month. I'm on the road speaking. And, you know, this weekend I'll be in Minneapolis. Next week I'm at the Hinman meeting. I just came back from Chicago midwinter. Uh, and, and I give these, these courses and I can get people pretty excited about sleep and helping themselves and their patients. But then they're going to get to that inevitable roadblocks of I'm not sure what to do. Uh, I'm not comfortable getting into a field where I'm not an expert. And dentists are really good that way. We, we really take that whole do no harm thing very, very seriously. And because of that, I, I've seen so many dentists that are just almost paralyzed with, I, I can't do that because I don't know everything. And they take course after course after course after course after course, and they never do anything. Then 
The other problem is, as you know, is medical insurance. Now, frankly, if medical insurance wasn't involved at all, then it'd be just like everything else in dentistry. So we could probably handle that. But the problem is it is involved. It does cover, medical insurance covers oral appliance therapy. And because of that, there's a different set of rules that we, that we need to learn. You don't have to, but most of us, uh, you know, my patients uh, in my Idaho practice and out here in North Carolina where I am currently, our average patient pays two or $300 out of pocket. That's it. And that's a real game changer once you learn how to play in that arena that I can help my patients at so low of a cost. So again, I would say perseverance and getting a, uh, getting a mentor, you know, finding somebody that's like, hey, they're doing what I want to do and let me, let me uh, figure out how do they do it. And, and being a little careful, there's, there's a lot of people out there trying to sell you stuff and you, you really don't need that much stuff. You can do a lot of this without a lot of stuff. I see that a lot. Everybody's, you know, trying to sell something, but, you know, education and perseverance are probably, you know, how I totally agree with that. But on the subject of billing for oral appliances, that is probably one of the biggest barriers I find when I talk to people and dentists getting, that's really a huge barrier. So that's a very loaded topic, I know, but... If you had one tip or somewhere to kind of steer them in a direction of where to start with billing for oral appliances, what would that be? So the, uh, I, I do believe that dentists getting started in this field uh, should consider working with a billing company, um, at least at first, because the billing companies, they're expert at this. They know what to do. They can get your staff up to speed, uh, figuring out you know, what to do and, and how to do it with the paperwork. Now, um, I'm not sure, I, I assume you know this, Samantha, maybe you don't, but my wife actually wrote a book on billing for dental sleep medicine, and that's available. You could put this down uh, below later, but on my website, which is jamesonspencer.com, if people go there, there will be a pop-up to download for no charge uh, a book on billing for dental sleep medicine. And the reason we put that book together and the reason we're giving it away for free is this can be a real roadblock for people and I don't want it to be. And it's not hard. It's not, you know, brain surgery, billing medical insurance. There's just a certain set of rules. So we put this book together and the reason my wife did it, you may think, oh, well, your wife must be an expert. She's the one that did it in your practice. No, not at all. Uh, my wife has never worked in our practice. She didn't know anything about medical billing and that's why I had her write it because she had to go through and figure out what does DME mean? What's CPT? What's ICD-10? She didn't know any of that stuff. And as we know, when you start working with somebody that's an expert in that area, they've forgotten what, they, you know, what, what most of us would ever even know. They, they've forgotten more than we would ever know, and they can't teach it. So she wrote this book at the level where probably a 12-year-old could go through the steps of the book and bill uh, medical insurance effectively. It also talks about Medicare. My daughter, uh, who's equally inexperienced in medical billing, is currently writing a book on how to fill out the ridiculous paperwork in order to become a Medicare provider. Um, and that's something you can do now, and there's companies that will, that will do it for you, and they charge a fee for that. Uh, but she's putting together something that will also be free uh, to help people get in network with Medicare, which I personally think is very important. That is awesome. I actually did not know that you guys wrote a book or your wife wrote a book. That is fantastic. I will absolutely put that link in the... Awesome. ...with people who are in medical... how enthralled you know we are in oral appliances and some of the acronyms and when you go to teach somebody sometimes things that are second nature to you now aren't to somebody who's just learning so i think that's fantastic yeah thank you and and there's also there's if you get the book and you go through it and i encourage doctors to do this and to download it for their their office managers so they can read it 
that doesn't mean you might not use a billing company, but it will allow you to know if the billing company is doing things right. Unfortunately, there's some. Uh, TAP's not affiliated with any that are that are uh, doing things inappropriately, but there's some companies out there, and most dentists would have no idea to know if it's right or wrong what they're doing. And if they are doing things inappropriately, it all comes back on the dentist. It's right. never the billing company that's going to be at risk. It's the dentist that's at risk. And I don't want any of my colleagues out there being at risk uh, for trying to help people. That doesn't make sense. Absolutely. I think I think that's a great, great point as well, at least even if you are working with a billing company to really understand what those terms mean, what, what everything kind of means and have a base knowledge of that. So exactly. I completely agree. That's great advice. So what is, in your opinion, the outlook for the dental sleep medicine field in, in the future for dentistry? Awesome. Well, and I am so excited about this. I, I think that sometimes people might uh, come to a uh, Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine meeting, for example, or something like that. And they see people like me, they see people like Dr. Thornton, they see people that are, that are the leaders and, and that have been doing this for 20 years and more. And they go, gosh, I'm, I'm too late. Uh, I, I should have been doing this 20 years ago. And really, I think that those of us that have been doing this a long time, we've been the pioneers. You know, just last year, 2015 anyway, the Academy of Sleep Medicine in conjunction with the Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine published guidelines. And these new guidelines basically say, hey, oral appliance therapy is equivalent to CPAP in these different cases. And, and they encourage medical doctors to just choose the therapy based on what's best for the patient. Gosh, that took us a long time to get to that point. And hats off to all the researchers and and all the people that have uh, spent their life trying to get data and evidence so that we could do stuff like that. But we're at the best time in the world uh, for this right now because also, frankly, of our declining medical um, insurance issues. What I mean by that is in a few years, it's going to be extremely common for average people to have very, very, very high deductibles. Right now, that's getting more common, but it's not necessarily the rule. When it becomes the rule, then all of a sudden people are going to ask questions. Right now, if somebody goes to the doctor and they say, hey, I'd like to put you on CPAP, um, and don't get me wrong, CPAP's a great therapy. I'm not, I'm not making a competition here, but the way it usually works when people go to the medical doctor is there's no discussion of money ever. There's just, here it is, there you go. And then they get billed down the road. Whereas when they come to our office as dentists, we talk money. We tell them up front, it will be exactly this much money. And that's not how our medical colleagues work. Well, because of how medical insurance is going to change, in my opinion, that's going to have to start happening. When people have $5,000 and $10,000 deductibles, there's going to have to be a conversation. When that conversation happens, it's logical that the patient would say, well, so I've got the CPAP thing and that's going to cost me $5,000 over five years with all the different stuff. What other options are there? Well, you've got this oral appliance option. Those are similar fees over a five-year period and patients will start making a choice. Whereas right now, oftentimes those choices aren't presented because the CPAP road is almost free to the patient. So there's really no... Uh, so again, I think for dentists getting involved in this right now, there's never been greater need. Uh, the, the pathway is easier. It's easier for patients to get tested with home sleep testing. Uh, it's, it, we're just going to explode, explode, explode. Yeah, I, I would totally agree with that. When you look at the statistics of, um, A, compliance with CPAP, and CPAP works. We know that. Um, Absolutely. But it also works if you compliance rates and people are really starting to take at the amount of people who are undiagnosed that this this industry is just getting started so if you are new or you haven't gotten into it time and you know you can help a lot of people which brings me to my last and final question for you is what is the most fulfilling aspect of dental sleep medicine for you personally? oh wow so um 
you know, being a, a, a TMJ guy, so to speak, it, it's, it's always wonderful to help people get out of pain, help people do things like that. However, it's interesting because we forget pain. Uh, you know, I like to say that you know, it, it, one of God's gifts to us is we forget pain. We can rem remember joy and feel joy like that. But if you think on something back that was painful, you don't feel the pain. Otherwise, no woman would have more than one child. Okay, <laughs> that'd be it. So with sleep, on the other hand, all they have to do to know if they're being helped or not is go without their appliance one night or go without, you know, just not use it. With TMJ, it's not the same. So with sleep, you tend to have a very obvious effect on people that if they don't use the therapy, they feel terrible. Uh, they, they go from feeling pretty bad, but that was just standard for them to feeling fantastic you know, they forgot what it meant to get a good night's sleep and they start to super value that. And that can have a ripple effect of getting healthy overall, losing weight, you know, better time with their family. It's just unbelievable. And, and I have colleagues in this field from every aspect of dentistry and they all say the same thing. I mean, even those, you know, all, all dentists have great impact on people and including cosmetic dentists and, and, endodontists and orthodontists, we all have an impact on people and a smile is very important. But I've heard dentists in all of those fields say that dental sleep is some of the most rewarding interactions they've ever had with their patients. So that's pretty awesome. And the cool thing about dental sleep medicine too, I think is you can do this forever. Uh, you, you could have shaky hands and still do dental sleep medicine. You can not, you know, have loops that are this, this, long uh, to do dentistry. And now all of a sudden you can take them off and do dental sleep medicine. So for my colleagues out there that are getting a little older and they're you know, worried about losing hand skills or vision or things like that, boy, what, what a great area to go into and have huge impact on people's lives. I think that's fantastic. I, you know, Al, on the manufacturing side of things, I don't always get to talk to the patients directly or see the patients directly. But when I do um, get those phone calls or we do get those testimonials, that is so rewarding. And that's such a small scale for us over here. So I can't imagine what it's like to kind of be on the front. Yeah, it's amazing. So... Um, so before we go, I'm going to let Dr. Spencer talk a little bit about his upcoming webinar. Okay, awesome. So on this coming Tuesday, so that's a week from today, right? So a week from today at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific, we're going to do a webinar on uh, avoiding side effects. And I, I've been asked, I've been working with Patrick on this and, and and I'm excited to talk on that webinar about some things we can do in our examination that, that I, I'm learning a lot of this from experience of consulting hundreds of dentists and seeing the little things that they miss that, again, I had done so many of these appliances, it almost just became second nature to me. Uh, so we'll be talking about ways to avoid people having muscle pain, looking at the jaw joints and what's going on with the jaw joints that could result in bite changes. Uh, we'll talk about how to avoid those things. Uh, also talking about jaw pain. When someone presents with jaw pain, I think a lot of times we're doing the opposite of what we should be doing with those patients. It's very common. So we'll talk about that too. And then at the end, I'm going to talk about uh, something called Spencer Study Club, which is something I've put together to help people with education, training their staff, uh, and having the mentoring, you know, having, you know, 100 people looking over your shoulder as you are helping those, those uh, initial patients, or even if you're a, an expert, you've been doing this a long time getting pearls of wisdom that could make a huge difference in your practice. So we'll spend the last part of that webinar talking about that. Great. As soon as we're done with this broadcast, I am going to so that you guys take advantage of to look through the actual Spencer study. I think that if you are interested in dental sleep medicine and getting started, that is going to be a really, really good thing to learn more about and see if that's right for your practice. So 
Um, I will put that again. I'll put that link. It will be Tuesday, March 21st at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 p.m. Pacific. And it's about avoiding the side effects um, of dental sleep medicine, treating you know, dental sleep medicine with your patients. So I will post that link. Don't forget, it is free webinar. And um, thank you again, Dr. Spencer, for taking the time to be on our live broadcast and to provide this free webinar for our viewers. So thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure, Samantha. Thank you. No problem. And I look forward to um, having you on again in the future. And have a great day, everybody. Awesome. Thank you, everybody.